So the exam question reads, genes are made from DNA. The diagram shows DNA copying itself, replication, by unzipping to form two new double strands. Complete the diagram. So you're told to write either A, C, G, or T in each of the spaces provided. So for two marks, you get one mark for filling in these two and one mark for filling in these four. So this question is basically testing your knowledge about the higher tier material here at the bottom of the page of the revision guide where A binds with T and C with G. So the important thing to remember are these two bullet points where A is with T and C is with G. So returning back to the exam question, if you're told that A is with T and C is with G, what you'd write in here is C and in here A to get you the one mark. And for the second mark where most students actually make the mistake and don't get the mark is that DNA is an identical copy of itself. So therefore, if G and C is here, G and C will be written here. And if T and A is in here, T and A will be written here, not A, T, C, G. Because had you written that instead, you would be creating a mirror image if the mirror line is here. So not an identical copy. So bear that important point in mind in order to get the full marks if faced with the same exam question when you guys take your exams. So moving on to the next question, look at the list. So here's your three to choose from. When does DNA copy itself? Choose your answer from the list. Now to get the one mark, you should know the answer is before cell division because you are told that in the revision guide where it says before a cell divides, it copies its DNA, DNA replication. So the next question reads, this question is about DNA fingerprinting. Scientists use DNA fingerprinting to identify DNA left at a crime scene. Look at the flowchart. It shows the main stages the scientists use. Some of the stages are missing. Finish the flowchart by writing in the missing stages. So what do we have here for the two marks? A uh, flowchart with two gaps missing, so each gap represents each of the marks. Two gaps to give you two marks. So the clues that you're given is that the blood sample is isolated and DNA extracted. The sample DNA is copied to increase the amount. So what happens next? Then you're told what happens after that. Then you're asked to fill in what happens next. And then the last clue that you're given as the final stage is the DNA fingerprint is compared to known samples. So when given this information, you should be knowing straight away that you're, be you're basically being asked to recall this information here. So let's zoom in on this information about DNA fingerprinting. Now these four stages you should already have memorized. So the stages is isolation, fragmentation, separation, and comparison. Now if we're turning back to the exam question, we can see that we're given the first clue that the blood is isolated. So basically you're asked what happens after isolation. So basically, after isolation, fragmentation using restriction enzymes happens, and that's the first mark. Then going back to the exam question, so DNA is placed on a gel, so what happens next? And the clue that you're given is that at the end, the DNA fingerprint is compared to known samples. So basically, they're asking you what happens before comparison. So going back to our revision guide for the aid, before comparison, separation using a technique called electrophoresis use, and that's all you got to write to fill in the second gap and just like that two marks by memorizing a few simple lines so the next question asks the sequence of bases in dna determine the order of amino acids in a protein look at the sequence of bases for a section of dna so here you're given your section gta ctc dga how many amino acids are coded for by this section of dna now we all know that amino acids are coded in triplets so therefore if there are nine divided by three this will this code here will code for three amino acids and that's your answer for the one mark so write down the complementary dna base code for this section of dna so this is like a similar uh, similar question to what we've just done where they're asking you to recall your information from here at the bottom of the revision guide where basically a is with t and c is with g so returning back to the exam question um because there are nine amino acids to fill in, uh, kids kind of get careless and don't fill in properly, and that's where they lose these simple one marks. So basically, uh, don't be careless when doing this, these type of questions. This will be C A T G A G A C T, as it is. So relook through it two or three times just to make sure you don't throw away these one marks. The next exam question is a pretty simple one, just one mark. So the diagram shows a human body cell. I showed you the diagram. Respiration happens in the parts labeled X, right? So what is the name of the parts labeled X? Well, whenever being asked anything about respiration and one of the organelles involved inside the cell, you should know straight away they're talking about mitochondria. Because mitochondria is like the main thing involved when it comes to respiration. So mitochondria, respiration takes place inside mitochondria, supplying energy for the cell. 
So the next exam question is something that we visited before. Again, they're looking for the complementary base pairing. So the diagram shows some bases in a section of DNA. So here's your diagram. C, fill in the space. G, fill in the space. T, fill in the space. So for one mark, you got to get all three right. And we know that at the bottom of this revision, guys, it tells us that A is with T and C is with G. So remembering this combination, which we've already visited so many times already, if, if C is written here, you would write G here, G is here, this will be C, T is here, you'll write A here. So the next question, how does DNA replicate make copies of itself? For two marks, they're basically asking you to recall this section here, higher tier material, these four steps. So it reads, a cell can make an exact copy of its DNA molecule in the following way. So the double helix unzips, new bases pair up with exposed bases on each strand, an enzyme binds the new bases together to form complementary strands. Two identical pieces of DNA are formed. Strand A has made a copy of strand B, and strand B has made a copy of strand A. You only need to write two to satisfy the criteria to get the two marks, but to secure your marks, because you want to identify what you need to write, and then write just that little bit more to guarantee your marks. So this is what you need to write, and that little bit more is this third point to secure your marks. So by writing these three points, you'll get the marks, where basically the double helix unzips, new bases pair up with the exposed bases in each strand, and an enzyme bonds the new bases together to form complementary strands. So returning back to the exam question, that's all you gotta write to get the two marks. So to get the next two marks, the question is asking you, genes are sections of DNA that code for the production of proteins. Mutations are changes to genes that can cause them to code for different proteins. Explain how a change to a section of DNA can lead to a change in the protein it codes for. Right, so this question is basically talking about this section here, which is basically protein synthesis, where it reads, the sequence of bases in a gene represents the order in which the cell should assemble amino acids to make the protein. A group of three bases represents one amino acid in a protein chain. Each protein has a different function. Right, what that gibberish basically means is the sequence of bases codes for the amino acids, and the amino acids then make the protein. It's a three-step three process, so basically, Bases equals amino acids, amino acids equals protein. So to get the two marks, basically what you would say is a change to the base sequence will cause a change to the amino acid sequence, which will inevitably change the protein that is being coded for. The next exam question is another question on DNA replication. And it reads, uh, the nucleus of the egg and sperm both contain DNA. After fertilization, the DNA replicates. Describe the two stages involved in DNA replication. You may draw a label diagram to help you. So for the two marks, you state the two stages, one mark for each of the stages. So they're basically asking you to recall your memory from this section here of the revision guide. You need to state these three points to get the two marks where the double helix unzips, that's one mark, and the second mark will be these two combined in one step where it reads, new bases pair up with the exposed bases on each strand, and enzyme bonds the new bases together to form complementary strands. So these three for two marks, very important, please memorize. The next exam question is a simple one mark question where it reads, Sam is investigating roots. She uses a microscope to look at a root hair cell. The diagram shows one of the cells Sam sees. So here's your root hair cell. And you're being asked for the one mark. Write down the name of one part of the cell that's not found in animal cells. Now the thing is, the revision guide only tells you what all cells contain. It doesn't tell you the difference between an animal cell and a plant cell. So what you just need to remember to get your marks is the difference between a plant animal cells. The plant has three structures that animal cells don't have, and one of them is a cell wall, the second is the vacuole, and the third is the chloroplast. Now you can only state two out of those three to get these marks, where it's either cell wall or vacuole. Now this is where the trick is, because they specifically chosen a root hair cell, where it's in ground level away from the light, that's why you can't find any chloroplast. So some may slip up and just simply regurgitate chloroplast, because they know it's one of the three, but it's not specific to the question that's being asked. So because there's a root hair cell, you can only either write cell wall or vacuole, and don't make the mistake of writing a chloroplast if you're given another root hair cell in the exams that you guys are going to sit. The question is all about enzymes. So the question reads, Tyrone is investigating the effect of pH on catalase enzyme. He uses the enzyme to break down hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. He times how long it takes to collect 10 cubic centimeters of oxygen. The graph shows his results. So here you got a graph of effect of pH on catalase activity. So on the y-axis, you got the time taken to collect the 10 cubic centimeters of oxygen. And then on the x-axis, you got the pH. So here's the shape of your graph. So you're being asked to use the graph to answer these questions. So the first one for one mark is write down the optimum pH of the enzyme catalase. So basically asking you which is the optimum pH. 
Now, you gotta use your understanding from the revision guide. So, as you can see, we've got a bell shaped graph. But the difference is, their axis here on the revision guide is enzyme activity versus pH, whereas our axis is time taken to collect the oxygen versus the pH. Now, the two graphs are upside down, but the information being provided is the same. So, what you basically need to understand is that in the revision guide, optimum pH is shown as the highest part of the graph because there's maximum enzyme activity taking place. However, another way of showing maximum enzyme activity is the least amount of time taken to collect the products. So basically, we're, for this exam question, we're looking for the lowest part of the graph to represent the optimum pH. So in this case, it would be pH 7, and that will get you the one mark. So the next question is asking you, use your knowledge of enzymes to explain the shape of the graph. So for two marks, they're basically asking you, why outside the optimum pH range is the enzyme activity worsening? So you actually need to write all of this here, where it reads, when enzyme molecules are exposed to high temperatures or extreme pH, the following occurs. Point one, the bonds holding the shape of the protein break. The shape of the enzyme's activity site is denatured. The lock and key mechanism no longer works. So you kind of need to write these two to get the marks, and then you kind of write the rest to kind of secure your marks. So this is kind of very important because this question kind of repeats itself, always asking about enzyme activity and why it happens in that way. And they kind of ask you it through the use of a graph. So this is very important to memorize. The next enzyme question is pretty much the same as the one we just did. And it reads, Bill investigates the effect of the enzyme catalase. He uses the enzyme to break down hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water. He measures the rate of the reaction by timing how long it takes to collect 10 cubic centimeters of oxygen. He repeats the reaction at different pH values. The table shows his results. So you got the pH here and the time in minutes here. So as you can see, it kind of takes less time and it takes more time. So describe the pattern in the results between pH 4 and pH 8 for one mark. So basically, you could say it speeds up and then it slows down, or it takes less time and then it takes more time. You know, describe basically, you're just saying what you see, and that's, that is what you see. And by saying those words, speeds up then slows down will actually get you the one mark. So the next question what is the optimum pH for catalase? So for one mark, if you were to plot these results on a graph where the pH is on the x-axis and the time in minutes is on the y-axis, what you would get is a v-shaped graph. And the lowest part of the graph would be pH 6. Now actually the lowest part of the graph is the optimum pH because it's the least amount of time taken. It's where maximum um, enzyme activity is taking place. So basically you're looking for the lowest part of the graph and that would be pH 6. And that is your answer for the one mark. So explain the results for pH 2. Use ideas about the lock and key theory in your answer for three marks. What they're basically asking you to regurgitate is this part that we've already seen, which is down here, about the lock and key mechanism. So you basically need to rewrite all this where it says, when enzyme molecules are exposed to high temperatures or extreme pH, the following occurs. The bonds holding the shape of the protein break, the shape of the enzyme's active site is denatured, and the lock and key mechanism no longer works. So. For the exam question, this time they're actually more generous. In the last exam question about enzyme activity, they only gave you two marks for this answer, but this time they're giving you three marks. So it just goes to show just how important the understanding of this section is. So very important to commit it to memory. The next exam question is a continuation from the one that we just did. So Tyrone repeats his investigation. This time he keeps the pH the same, but changes the temperature. He uses the temperatures 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 degrees Celsius. Catalase has an optimum temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. Draw a sketch graph to show the pattern Tyrone should expect in his results. So for two marks, you basically got to sketch the graph. Okay. So you're told the y-axis is going to be the time taken to collect the 10 cubic centimeters. And on the x, you got the temperature. So using the revision guide, you got to be careful though, because we're used to a bell-shaped graph from the revision guide. But in the revision guide, the y-axis is enzyme activity. Now, what you need to know is that temperature and pH produces pretty much the same type of graph, where in extreme pHs, the enzyme activity declines. A uh, declining in enzyme activity is shown in this bell-shaped type of graph when enzyme activity is on the y-axis. But what happens if the y-axis is time taken? So it will be reversed. It will be a V-shaped and not a bell shape. So for the two marks to draw a sketch graph, one mark is given to the overall shape of the graph, which you know should be a V-shape and the other mark is given to where the lowest part of the graph should be, which is basically the optimum temperature of 40 degrees. So if the V shape and at the end of the V is around here at 40 and it goes back up, then you get the two marks.